Chelsea have just smashed Villa at the bridge. 3-0. Standard procedure at this rate. And I'm not going to lie to you lot. I was in awe of that football. Or R. Uh, however you want to say it. Correct me. But that was that was rather easy. Yeah. And I know there was some scary moments. But Chelsea, can you do this? And you know what I mean by this with you fans. Can you do it? I really want to know how far this Chelsea team can go. And I've got nothing but positives in this game. And you know what? Maresca, we're going to talk about tactically how Maresca is. But do smash the likes. Do subscribe if you're new. I have notes. And I hopefully you lot can add your own notes in the description. Oh, the comments, sorry. Because you always do. Recently, anyways, you lot have been fantastic. So let's get straight down into it. You know, three goals. You know, Enzo, Jackson, Palmer. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a delight, man. And I'm not going to lie. Let's just start with the first thing. It's all about the first half. Not really the second, but I enjoyed it. And I watched both games. Yes, you can see I watched Man United as well. I watched both games extensively, side by side. And I couldn't have asked for two better games, if I'm being totally honest. And beating Villa, just so we can go above them, gives me some, you know, you know, you know that sort of leeway against Josh. But yeah, that's easily Chelsea's best lineup in the first half, easily. That's probably what maybe Chelsea fans, rival fans have been eager to see. Neto, Sancho and Eva, Eva Flanks as well. You know, Kukurea, uh, we'll talk about that guy again in a minute. Honestly, guy's wicked, right? And obviously you got that midfield. Somehow we was all asking, how do you fit Caicedo, Lavia, Enzo and Palmer into the same team and let it be something really, really functional? And there you go. Bob's your uncle. Maresca's done it. Inverting Caicedo from the right, pretty much, if you want to even call it that, or let's just call it a plain back three. Simply, that's that. That's Chelsea's best lineup and made light work of it. Made light work of Villa. They were scrambling for their lifetime in that first half. They did not know where they was. It looks like they it looked like they just woke up from a coma. And Chelsea, the football they're playing, it's fluid. You know, pass for pass. You know, there was, of course, Villa's going to have some moments. Watkins had two chances. Whoop to do. Every team has a chance or two in a game. But I just thought that was Chelsea's best lineup and it was wicked to see. And you know what? I really want to see if Sancho can develop a partnership with Kukurea and see if that comes a little something. I think it suits uh, their games. Both of them can go out wide or inside. So, yeah, I, I want to see what happens there compared to, let's say, maybe a Neto being left footed. It means he's more touchline where Sancho can do a little bit of both. Um, my first point is not even to do with the goal yet. It's probably more to say that uh, Colwell. See, we've all been screaming out like where the leaders are in Chelsea. And I know Colwell's only young and he's got a lot of experience to gain. But what I saw was a man in a central centre-back role, sometimes filling in at left centre-back when a Kukure went up, by the way. I saw a commander. And he was aggressive, tenacious, barking orders as well. He really controlled that back line. And I don't think he put a foot wrong. I think the referee was quite crap in terms of some of the some of the calls he was given in some fair tackles, like a one against uh, what Caicedo uh, put him again. There was many of those calls. that was kind of interrupting the flow of the game. And it was kind of annoying me, to be fair. But, uh, but Colwell, for me, today stood out in that defence. You know, I thought Fafana was wicked. I'm not too sure like if that injury was going to be a little something, but I wouldn't look into it too much. I think he's fine. You know, he got done once by Watkins. You know, Watkins is like, what, six, seven years old than him and whatnot. He got the better of him and Sanchez obviously saved that. But bar that, bar that, Cole Will went absolutely mental at Fafana and that's exactly what you want to see on the pitch. Fix up. Stop getting comfortable. You are 2-0 up at that point or whatever, yada, yada, yada. I think it was 1-0 at that point, to be fair. And that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see someone growing into a leader, into the captain, especially when Reese James is out. Someone has to step up. Him and Kai Sado, for me, are looking like leaders on the pitch. And I really like Kai Sado like anybody else these days. My second one was obviously Sancho and Neto's unpredictability just made all the difference. Aston Villa didn't know what to do. You know, Neto, where he's coming on the inside to make a whip, which he did, which kind of calls the second, uh, the first goal anyways, right? But, but... Sancho did it as well. And Sancho, I can't even, that, their fullbacks, their, full, their fullbacks were literally Bambi on ice. 
Both of them were skinning them. Both of them were literally just waiting for overlaps. Both of them were just waiting for moments to see if they even made one flinch so they can go inside and put and put, obviously put a pass or one-two combination together. I thought that really bamboozled Emery's team. I, I didn't feel like he had a solution for it as well. And, and in the second half, it did go a little bit flat, don't get me wrong, but they did enough just to kill off the game in the first half of me. You know, and the crowd... Uh, you know, Chelsea crowd needs to get some props as well. And I do like Villa's away fans uh, in particular, but they did go silent. I thought Chelsea's, uh, I thought it was roaring today. Really good. And you know what also made it a bit more bamboozled is Chelsea's press is so in sync. Moresco's got these lot pressing as a unit now. Now we talk about Man City, the way they press, or Liverpool on the slot or clock, Arteta's uh, boys as well, or men, you know, their press. Chelsea have got a really, really good press and it's high and it's aggressive. You know, it's, it's, even with the back three, you see with Colwell, he goes in centre. It's a bit like how Amrim has his central centre-back as well. He has him going high up into the middle of the pitch as well, into the second phase and pressing one of their players. Or even Kukure going very high on one of their wingers today, like with Leon Bailey. You know, he did not get the better of Kukure pretty much for 95% of the game. I think there was one instance where he did and he just it didn't amount to anything. But I just thought Chelsea's press was... Uh, something if you're a little bit of a tactical or a little bit of someone that just appreciates football you'd understand what i'm talking about there and this is pretty much all from the first half again it's kind of like arsenal yesterday when they beat west ham 5-2 everything was in the first half and that's all you needed to do if i'm being totally honest sanchez someone who gets absolutely roasted by all sorts of fans and i'm not really one to truly get onto him i think he's done more good than he has done bad for Chelsea and he's a decent stepping stone keeper but today kept you in the game 100% you know Aston Villa they, they've been doing it all season where it's John Duran Watkins at the end whoever you want to call it Tielemans they've been nicking and getting away with certain results and today could have been one of those if it wasn't for Sanchez his distribution was 10 out of 10 call me blind say I need to go spec savers but that is what you call Proper goalkeeping in a distribution form, anyways. Out wide into Caicedo, name it. He was there. He was very comfortable. Didn't have no scary bozo moments in him. And I feel like the defense. If anyone was going to be scared that, or anyone was going to be a little bit shaky today, it would make maybe Fafana had that moment at most because Sanchez was brilliant, and I think he deserves some praise by your fan base as well. Enzo scoring as well. You know, Enzo's in his best form at Ch in a Chelsea shirt at that, you know, he's got seven goals and assists in five, I believe, two in his last two as well, if you want to name it like that in terms of goals. And he's thriving in this role. And this is the scary part about this midfield, right? And Enzo, I'm not saying he's worth every penny in it. And I know I've gotten onto him and I know I've been highly critical, but the best, the, the, you know what the, the thing is for me is I saw Lavia go high up the pitch. I saw Caicedo go high up the pitch. I saw... Enzo go high up the pitch, but each one of them, it's like they took turns to sit back pretty much and make sure that the defence wasn't exposed. You know, you see Lavia go high up trying to link up with Pedro Neto a couple of times on that right-hand side, or even you see Caicedo go a little bit further, or Enzo near Sancho. Someone was always at the base and someone kept it ticking, and all three of those players could keep it ticking. And to give Cole Palmer as well, there you go. Like he gave him the space that he needed and the license to roam up, up in the final third and obviously get with Jackson. And obviously Cole Palmer ended up getting an assist and a goal. You know, and that goal was a peach of a goal as well. Brilliant, brilliant uh, play from Chelsea today. And they didn't even just causing mayhem in all sorts of locations. Honestly, that was they got dug out. <laughs> they were literally rabbits in the hole and the foxes were coming to snuff them out. That it was. It was just total domination. And I feel like with Chelsea, there's another gear to go. I thought even Jackson could have got his second, potentially. That first goal, that finish was brilliant. Brilliant. I know it's off the post, but it was brilliant. Just being in the right areas at the right time. You know, that's, that comes from good coaching and there's good talent in, in Jackson. He just keeps up with his tally. Absolutely phenomenal player to watch. Very good on the eye. And I feel like Chelsea's scouting department at this moment and recruitment, they're not getting their flowers. And I know this might be a little bit over the top, but we, you know why we have to give them flowers? It's because we've been highly critical as rival fans 
about them. And right now they're thriving. I believe they are second place in the league on goal difference of Arsenal. Arsenal got Man United next. And you know, you never know what might happen to, in that situation. But you can't write off Chelsea. Can Chelsea do the unthinkable? Am I going over the top a little bit? Maybe if they got the minerals or not. But if Chelsea can keep up with this until January and get themselves a little bit more security at the back, maybe even a goalkeeper or a central defender that's of experience, of age. Who knows? You know, we've seen it with Conte before. Maresca is performing an absolute miracle. And you know what? I might even go as far to say that Chelsea might have the most technical squad in the league. I feel like every single one of their players can play football. I don't know who can't play football in their team. Even... Even Sanchez is good with his feet, to be fair. You know what? Slap Maresco on the foot. I'm pretty sure he was a technical footballer too. How one of the coaches going? I don't know. But yeah, Maresco's game management in the second half was brilliant. And I, you know what? I wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't give him that prop because I gave Arteta that prop yesterday, you know, rotating, getting in Madweke as well. Him getting in with their assists, obviously with Cole Palmer with that goal. I thought the way it looked for me, is that Maresca told the squad, literally, slow it down, calm down, reserve your energy, because you've got another game coming up next week. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. That sort of game management is good from a manager, great from a manager even. You know, you, you're tuning up, you're comfortable, you're moving the ball about, you're dominating possession. You know, if you can find your moments, they will come to you. And that's exactly what happened with Chelsea. With Cole Palmer and a third goal, I thought, you know what? We all expected Aston Villa to come out and give it a little bit. They need to get back into the game. But that's where Chelsea were trying to pick them off. It was a little bit sloppy, don't get me wrong, in, in some phases. But at the end, it's a bit like any team that's really needs to go for the chokehold. And they, they're really in, backed into a corner. They're going to have to go for it. And Cole Palmer exposed that in the end. And you know, even then, they were still in like... Banks of like, what, 5 4 1, 5 3 2, however you want to label it. So, Chelsea just slowing down the tempo and playing their game, it was disgusting to say the least. And I think the most important part for any fan is to say clean sheet. The clean sheet is, is everything. You know, Man United won 4 0. There's a clean sheet. You know, you don't really get clean sheets too tough for Man United of late, but. You know, there you go. But this is not about Manchester United. It's about Chelsea. Even Chelsea right now, there's a clean sheet in the bank. Confidence is building more and more. Arrogance will be filled within the dressing room, which is fine. Egos getting further where they don't need, where they don't probably belong. But you know, in the next game, on on you go. I'm really rooting for Chelsea right now. Uh, just just as a rival, just. If I want anyone to potentially win the league out of all these rivals, I don't look at Chelsea as a, a direct rival like a Liverpool. I don't mind them. I don't mind their fans. You know, I think I understand them a little bit. I feel like we have the same ambitions, the same kind of standards as a football club. And that's where I land with Chelsea. And I'm I'm, a, I'm in hope right now. I'm in hope here, land. If anyone can do it, it's probably them. And you know what? Fair play. But do smash the likes, subscribe. If, I feel, if you feel like I've missed anything or missed anyone out, please uh, feel free to add that in the comments as well. I'm always interested. I'm always replying. So yeah, in a bit. And then hopefully you enjoy this review.